Hey y'all, welcome to the Coyote Traffic School Podcast. I am your host, Chris Polk, as always, coming at you from the fur shed, the leather workshop, the skull factory. We got all kinds of stuff going on in here. Um, and the mechanic shop, although I'm not a mechanic. I got a bunch of tools, though, so I guess I could play the part. Um, but anyway, um, first off, I want to start off by saying, uh, mentioning our sponsor, Cox Bros. If you need any trapping supplies, uh, baits and lures, um, good quality videos, give Cox Bros. Uh, look them up, coxbros.com, K-A-A-T-Z. They'll get you set up and uh, they'll get free, not free shipping, but fast shipping. Uh, anytime I've ordered anything from them, it's been, uh, if not that day, the, the very next day, uh, I get a notification that the, the uh, sh package is shipped. Um, so they're great to deal with and uh, good uh, from my perspective kind of younger guys in the, in the trapping industry and I like that so I appreciate that um, and so uh, give them a look them up give them a shout if you if you got some needs uh, for your trap line I know for some of y'all trapping season is winding down uh, I guess for most of us trapping season is winding down even here in the in the south it's into January so we got you know another month or so uh, at least for kind of fur trapping which is uh, you know coyotes are probably starting to rub in some areas pretty good so We'll see how that pans out, but I'm gonna to try to take it all the way to the end of February. Uh, I will say I appreciate y'all bearing with me. I know my podcasts have been a little bit erratic lately uh, with the new baby and work and trying to get a little bit of a trap line out. I ain't got much of a trap line, but I got a handful of sets and we've been making a few catches along and along. Be sure, if you're not, be sure to follow along uh, on YouTube. I got kind of a daily, daily trap check um, and it's been pretty short videos lately because I've got, um, 12 to 18 or so sets out so uh, you know picking up today had a gray fox and a bobcat so making a few catches got the hog trap going so actually the night I'm recording this um, I caught just dropped the the gate on 10 hogs um, so that's pretty exciting go dispatch them but uh, it's been it's been a lot going on to try to and, and to try to put the time because I, I try not to shoot these from the hip I try to kind of do some planning and, and preparation ahead of time so I'm trying to weasel out that time and uh, I've been trying to at least keep up so hopefully my plan is to have this podcast and then maybe another one come out later this week and then I'll, I'll feel like anyways I'm back on track but I know the listenership has, has been growing and rocking along uh, um, you know the downloads I, is, is, is doing better than I expected so for all of you that are sharing and passing it along I really appreciate that um, I appreciate every one of you that's listening and hope y'all are having a good season. Um, yeah, not only with that stuff, but I got my, my leather work stuff, the, the beaver tail stuff is still rocking on, and um, that's uh, that's been keeping me busy enough. You know, I haven't really, I, my goal is to try to get some of that, some wallets and things made ahead of time so that I can sell and be able to ship, you know, right on uh, on time, but um, heck, I'm, I'm get enough orders that right when I think I can start to try to make a hit I'll have a few more orders come in and that's just all through you know social and word of mouth and so that's been that's been pretty awesome and I appreciate the reception any of y'all that have, have ordered from me and uh, you know starting to do a little custom stuff too I I'm, uh, got a uh, Cape Buffalo some Cape Buffalo coming in hopefully later this week and I'll do a, a wallet with so I'm pretty pretty anxious to get my hands on that so um, I'm really enjoying the leather the leather work and just the, the creativity that it gives you know um, so if you if you've got I've, I've had folks ask me about uh, making something but using their tails and I'd be glad to do that um, the way that I would recommend is I've got a video and I'll link to it but uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with how to skin and flesh a beaver tail um, I've got a video that walks you through that it's actually easier than you think um, and then the, the tannery that I use is uh, Specialty Leather Productions in Boone, Iowa. And I just recommend sending it straight to them. Get your get your tails fleshed and salted, send to them. And then once they're tanned, they can be shipped to me. And you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, three, four months minimum turn time on the tanning. Depending, it depends on when they get batches of tails in, a big enough batch to, to uh, tan. Because I've, I've, had, I've had tails come back in less than two months. Um, but uh, there's a couple times that I've called them and I'm, sh I'm shipping them. Uh, larger quantities and probably some people are and so uh, I've called them and they said well we, we got a batch going in and you know week after next if you get your tails up here we'll try to hold it till, till you get get them here so that's worked out good but um, so yeah if you're if you're interested in the tails and I, I've got my other leather that um, I've got a couple 
wallet patterns that I've kind of worked out. Uh, and I, I want to get more diligent about getting those done and get some coyote leather wallets and things like that made. So, uh, but if you got some questions about the leather, shoot me a, shoot me a note and let me know. Uh, I've had some, I've, I've, it's been really neat. Some folks sharing, had a guy sharing with me this evening, a, uh, a raccoon blanket that he had. His, his wife made it, but uh, he just picked him up a sewing machine. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool to see, uh, you know, see what, what people come up with. I, I really enjoy that. And I appreciate everybody that sends me. Uh, you know, sends me messages on stuff, and 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 all of you that send me notes on enjoying the podcast, listening to the podcast, feedback on the podcast, uh, and, and you know, catch pictures. You know, especially um, probably one of the most rewarding aspects of, of doing this is getting uh, you know a catch picture from somebody that says, "Hey, you know, you helped me get started, or you're the reason that I, I finally." made the jump to start trapping and you know i caught my first cat or caught my first coyote or something like that man that uh there's times when this gets to be a grind just like trapping you know trapping is is work when it boils right on down to it it's work um but but you got the rewards and the payoffs that come through that work and, and that's why you do it and the same thing with this you know especially especially right now just with everything trying to keep up with everything some you know, something's going to turn into a grind and something's going to be a whole lot easier to just push it off but uh getting all that feedback and that that uh really makes it makes it worth it so i appreciate all of you that are are shooting me some feedback and and um and, and out there catching stuff and sending me pictures so with that i'm going to jump in i've had a few questions come in lately and i had one a pretty in-depth question that um i responded to in my email but i thought uh, it, it would be a good question to ask because it's something that that comes up from time to time um, you know particularly with new trappers um, so this one is so this trapper has gotten has had some good results in making catches but they're monitoring some of their traps with a uh, uh, game camera a cellular game camera and so the the, the catch 22 with that is that with any kind of game cameras you see everything you've missed too and that's a, a very humbling uh, experience and so that's what this this trapper is uh, is concerned about contamination at the set and I'll, I'll it's gonna be a long read but I'll I'll, uh, I'll run through it so reviewing our catches today you might initially think that's not so bad why why the concerns about trapping struggles uh, well from what little I do know about trapping, I'm pretty sure we have primarily caught the critters who don't really care or have not been educated about scent yet. So he's talking, he initially starts out, I'm pretty sure we caught all the possums and coons in, in our county. Um, so the other two compelling pieces of evidence contributing to our struggles are one, not one or two, but almost all dirt hole sets, our primary set, have been dug out from the sides. Some of the sets multiple times. It is almost as if they can they can smell the trap is there and they know exactly where it is in the ground. Two, our trap line is about 45 minutes from the house, so we're using the game cameras to monitor. Um, and so, like I say, the game camera is one thing that um, it, it's really humbling because you see all those animals that you miss. Um, hopefully not all, but you see animals that you miss, and, and that's what, what can really start to grind on you and, and you know get you to start questioning what's going on here so i believe that i have narrowed down our struggles to three primary suspects first i made wax dirt and wax for where they're at it's kind of clay this past summer and we are using it for the first time um we stored the wax dirt in a covered trash can after making it not sure if it developed an odor or because we used dirt from near the house um and not from where we trap that maybe the, the coyotes are smelling that specific dirt. Second, we're using uh, co cover holes to combat the elements. During the off season, we had the bag stored in the basement area um, and not sure if it could have absorbed any, absorbed any odors. And finally, and our prime suspect is um, I prepared our traps by boiling them in logwood dye, then dipped in full metal jacket. Shortly after the second full metal jacket dip, I moved the traps into the basement so they could hang um, and dry because we had a th pop-up thunderstorm, summer thunderstorm, and the tree traps hung there a few days, maybe more, before I put them in individually Ziploc bags and uh, rubber made tote for storing. Um, so trying to determine 
which one or more of the culprits is impacting the success on the traps this season. Um, right now, if all the traps pulled and spray them off with a car wash, my plan is to re-dip them and not bring them inside uh, once I figure out how to maintain a 65 degree temperature. So if you're in Georgia, not too hard to maintain a 65 degree temperature, although our, uh, our temperature right now is feeling very uh, wintry, and so that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad we finally got some winter because Man, the 70s and 80 degrees in the, in the winter time just gets old. Um, so, a few things that came to mind in my response. One, um, the the animals are working the sets, so they're they're working the dirt hole. They're just not coming over the trap. So that is is a plus. Um, so they're not they're not too spooked they're not too concerned but they maybe just seem to avoid the trap area now it, there's definitely the possibility that it could be some of those things um, but you know there's plenty of guys that make wax dirt and you know get get the dirt from wherever they can get it and then take it and use it elsewhere so my first guess wouldn't necessarily be the wax dirt um, and then the cover holes that can't, you know, uh, scent contamination, I mean, that can be a concern um, with certain kind of, you know, even using a polyfill. Um, so that could be, and then the, the, the full metal jacket contamination, that, that, that potentially could be. But the, the main thing that jumps out to me is the game's working the holes. They're working the sets. Um, so, and one of my first suggestions was Try to, if, if they're consistently coming in from the side, you know, if, if they're consistently coming in from the right side, uh, you know, try putting another trap in there. Leave your leave your one trap like it is, and put another one in, uh, and, and try to blend it a little bit more on the side that they're working in. Um, I guess because my gut feeling is, I don't think they're, I don't necessarily think that they're recognizing something in the ground and trying to avoid it. I just think just the way they're reacting and it's. Especially, I would say, with it, with gray foxes, they are the world's worst about working a set every way except the way you want to work. You want them to work it. So they're going to come and stand on the top and on the sides. Um, and then one thing, I, I need to get uh, the Teachers of the Night coyote video, but uh, one thing I've heard about that is they're, they're, it's pretty consistent that you can see coyotes coming in and coming into the high ground around a dirt hole before they start working it. Um, and, and you know, typically we set our traps on the lower side. So, um, you know, if you're seeing consistencies like that, try shifting your trap placement. Try adding another trap to that side, uh, and just see see if there's any reaction. See if they if they do back away totally from the set. Um, with the wax dirt being a concern, uh, you know, one thing I don't think it's an issue, but one thing you could try to do to test it is. You know, sprinkle, sift some wax dirt all around the, the pattern area. You know, not just directly over the trap, um, and, which I think is a probably a good um, a good measure. Any you know, anytime you're doing something that's a little bit foreign to the area, uh, even even I use um, I've got to where I I carry a bucket full of kind of dry dirt, uh, just because we're in clay here, just nasty red clay, and when it rains, that is no fun to bed or reset or anything so just a little bit farther south you can get into some sandy ground and so I take the advantage of when I'm down that way and I'll throw me a couple of shovels full in a bucket and then when I got a remake I'll uh, I'll use that it makes life so much easier that stuff I, I got I got a bucket of it sitting in the back of my truck we got an inch rain over last weekend and two days you know afterwards I was pulling it out and sifting it because it's just sand that, that water just feeds through it and makes life so much easier um, but it's a it's a more gray black color than our red clay so I, i'm in an effort to try not to single out specifically the trap area and you know, i kind of i kind of sift it all over the place just so you know there's not just you know one target area that looks suspicious but you know all of this area is uh you know kind of the same so it doesn't you single out your trap specifically um another thing you can do and it wouldn't be my top choice, but it's definitely something you can do, and I know people have luck with it, is increasing your backing or increasing, 
your fencing, so to speak. So I know there's there's guys that'll use um, you know sticks and logs in kind of a V with your dirt holes in the back and the traps out front. That's actually we were in uh, Alaska trapping Arctic foxes. That's how we would set up the sets um, to to guide the fox. Really more of like a coon set. I mean we got it really heavy, nicked it right down to the trap, but to guide the fox right over the trap. Um, and so I wouldn't I wouldn't go you know to the sticks on the side of the trap, but and use a little bit more blocking to try to funnel the animal over the trap and into the dirt hole. Um, for foxes, especially gray foxes, I wouldn't hesitate to do that. Um, reds and coyotes, I try not to get crazy with it, um, but it may be something, and that'd be something you know you too, especially with the cameras that you're running, you can monitor and see how the reaction is to that. Um, One question that I, that I have is, is how deep are the holes? So, and the more that I've kind of been studying and, and researching, you know, really high level trappers, one thing that they seem to really focus in on is the depth of that dirt hole. Well, the depth of the dirt hole and quality bait. So, if you've got a bait that that animal really wants, then, you know, they're gonna work your set deeper your hole is and the harder it is for him to get the bait, the longer he's going to have to stay there to work that set. And so, you know, I've run into this with, with our red clay ground here. I've, I've shot away, especially from you know, when I first started trapping, yeah, I kind of like using big hole sets. Um, I just, you know, felt like it was really flashy and, and, and um, good, good, good at catching game. But, man, especially if it's not as wet as it has been, talk about a pain in the neck to try to dig a, a nice big dirt hole and so I went to using punch holes and things like that well one of the issues that I think impacts that is you don't you don't get as much bait you know it's, it's fine for a lured set but when you're using bait you're trying to invoke that um, you know eating response and but if you know there's only a q-tip full of bait down a small little hole it may not be worth a coyote messing with you know to try to get that a little bit out so um, you know, I've been trying to do a little bit more to make a bigger hole, but it's something that I've seen is, you know, if you don't have a good deep hole and you just got kind of your bait stuck right there in the edge, something can come in, work, work the set for, you know, 12 seconds, get your bait out, and there's no reason for them to stay there, so they're gone. So the deeper you can make that dirt hole, the better off you're going to be um, for getting that animal to work your set longer. He's, he's already got the animal showing up and working the dirt hole with the bait he's using. So, I mean, that's that's ideal. You know your bait's good, you know they want your bait. So just make it a little, try to make it a little bit harder for them to get and see if that um, will help. Another suggestion is uh, trying to blend the sets. So I run I'm kind of back and forth on the blending. A lot of times on my dirt holes, I'll leave it as a dirt pattern, and then on my flat sets, I try to blend those in. Um, but you know, if it's your if it's your dirt pattern, especially if you've got you know different colored dirt like I was talking about, um, you know, putting a few leaves and whatnot over it just to kind of blend that all in where your your trap area doesn't stand out as bad. That may be another option for. Um, reducing any hesitation, I guess you could say. Um, let's see, there was... So talking about the, talking about the guiding and sticks and all. Another thing that I, I like to do that's a little more subtle guiding is using scat or urine um, as, as kind of foot guides. Once they start, you know, once they start funneling into the hole and over the trap area, um, using those to try to narrow them down. Um, and then a, another thing that, that I think is worth considering is um, Trying to maybe trying a different 
betting style. And so specifically what I'm thinking of is like uh, Mark Zagger's um, grass covering over his traps. So that eliminates a couple things. That, that eliminates your cover holes and that also eliminates your wax dirt. So you're down to, if there's, if there's any issues, then it's, um, your trap contamination. Um, and that, man, I tell you guys, I've been, I've been messing around with the pan cover, the screen, steel screen pan covers, and that's taking some learning to get used to. But on my flat sets, you know, when I'm trying to blend those in, uh, I've been using kind of the Zagger style of, uh, you know, digging my hole out just a little bit small for the trap, hammering it out where the trap fits in flush, and, you know, hammering around the edges to, to fit the trap in solid, and then taking what I've actually found works good. He talks about grass clippings and what I've run into, probably because I don't have grass, but I've got weeds, is uh, when I try to save my grass clippings, they kind of shrivel and, and uh, twist, and I don't, I don't really like that. But um, if you can find some old hay, that old hay is flat, lays flat, and uh, you know a lot of it's cut kind of small. That to me works really good. So that's actually what I keep as a bucket full of old hay, and uh, I'll put that over. But uh, you know that the more of your variables that you're concerned with, if you can take those out, then that'll help you narrow down. Um, so that's just a that's just a few things to think about. Um, I was listening to one of the Trapping Radio podcasts today, and you know, there were some folks asking about scent control, and Clint and a lot of the other, you know, O'Gorman and some of those other kind of high-level trappers, they don't worry too much with scent control. Um, and actually, after reading um, Hoofbeats of a Wolfer and, and Clint's Eastern Wolfer, my traps that I brought back from Texas, I haven't done anything to them. Now, some of them may catch it, some of them didn't, and I haven't kept track of which is which. I just dumped them all out in a pile in the yard and then put some in um, in a tote and put it in the bed of the truck. And so, um, you know, that's what I've made. I caught a coyote over the weekend, uh, had two grays. Bobcat's not really concerned, and grays aren't honestly really that much either. But um, and I don't know if the trap that I caught the coyote in was a trap that I caught something in Texas or not, but just to try to experiment and see, you know, do I need to re-wash and dye my traps after every use? And, uh, you know, especially if you've got good quality and, and a good quantity of bait that's attractive enough to them, that should kind of draw their focus off of the trap and, and into, because they don't know you know, there's all kinds of smell, especially in the south, there's all kinds of junk in the woods to begin with, right? So it's, you know, metal smell or something like that is not necessarily a foreign odor to them. Um, you know, I think really where you get into your issues is if you get, when you get diggers, and to me, un, diggers are gonna come in two scenarios. Either your trap's not bedded solidly and it wiggled when they stepped on it, and so they dig it up, raccoons primarily, or coyotes, or you got some kind of food scent on it, you know, your bait or something, and so they smell that and dig it up in response. Mm. Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, that kind of got me off track, but so you know, if you're not having digging, maybe the coyote's a little concerned. Personally, I think that he's just working it and you know there's no rhyme or reason to it and maybe because and maybe there is a reason to it I don't know but maybe because um, you know that's what worked on some of the others that's that's kind of how they approach it maybe you know one thing that I've seen you know the like a trench set is a pretty popular set and um, and then kind of what I've talked about in some of my videos in the Charlie Robbins style dirt hole set, which is kind of like a less intense version of a trench set or something. It's, it's hard to describe, but it's, you know, you've got your dirt hole and you've got kind of a sloping trench into the hole. So you're not, you know, it's not a full on trench where it takes a full step down, but it, it slopes down and the 
the idea presumably being that you know that lowest spot going into the hole makes the most sense to dig from for a coyote now there's all kinds of speculation as trappers we come up with all kinds of reasons and ideas um, as to why things work or how things should work but we don't really know um, so you know we're just guessing and going off of and, and having having the camera data and, and being able to watch man that's invaluable for learning you know how animals sit and maybe maybe you, sh you should start setting your dirt holes and putting a blended trap right there just sift the pattern not even put a trap just put your blended foothold trap on the side where they tend to work it from i mean that's you know we we put these human constructs of hey he's gonna come straight in and work the set just like this one he comes in and the wind's blowing and so he circles down wind to get a whiff of it and that's how he's comfortable approaching or he comes in from the back of it to begin with or he comes in from the side and instead of instead of going up until he's 90 degrees to it and then cutting over you know he's going to angle in and so um i think we may over we tend to overthink what the animals are thinking i had i had a comment on um i had a, i posted a, a picture on instagram the other day of a set that similar style dirt hole and had a couple of cat tracks right on the edge I mean they were probably within an inch of my trap jaw um, but just right on the edge and uh, <clears throat> I mean I took it standing up looking down at the the, the pattern and the, the hole and all and just just snapped it with my phone you know and somebody replied well you know if you have your if you have your dirt hole at a 45 degree angle then they have to get straight to see it and man, I've heard a lot of that stuff you know that's what you hear a lot it, it kind of state conventions and all and you know people talking about that you stop and think about I mean if I got a dirt if I got a hole right here beside me it don't matter what angle it is I can lean over and look you know, for the most part and and see down in the hole from the, this side that side that side that side now if it's angled you know this way I, I may have from the back I may have to lean a little bit farther over but I bet I can see that that down that hole from some other way except for right where you want and, and that's what I would encourage you to I, I do think that, well I, I don't even know you know I, I think maybe maybe the steepness of the hole could be beneficial at times um, because that means an animal would have to be closer to be able to see down the hole but again you don't really want the animal just looking down the hole you want them working that hole so you want something good down in there um, and then you know I try to I try to kind of block my bait with something whether it's feathers whether it's wool whether it's uh, you know some some grass or leaves or something to try to obscure it too so that even if he can't see down the hole he doesn't know what's down there but it smells like it's something I want so I'm still gonna work it uh, and that's the that's the key to it all right we got we want that animal working the set for as long as possible so that he steps in that trap at one point or another so um, just a thought that's that's there I guess a, a series of thoughts about you know what, what may be happening and, and I, I'll be honest with you I think if more people put trail cameras on their sets more people would be asking the same questions of why the heck am I not catching those coyotes that are coming by my set and that's something that's been plaguing me the last few years as I've started to set trail cameras on traps and you know I know and just by looking at tracks in the road I know that I'm missing the animals and I've been trying to figure out how can I miss fewer animals um, because I'm not necessarily out to catch every one but uh, I want to catch most of them I want to catch everyone that comes by my trap anyway you know I don't want to I don't want to them to have no reason to come by so uh, and to me that's that's the fun of being a trapper is that's a constant battle because you can have coyotes that that you know have experience and know that they're 
may be a trap right there. And and that's something that we didn't necessarily discuss, but you know, maybe maybe it is a, a educated coyote that's been pinched, that pulled out, um, and so he's familiar with that, that trap pattern. And he knows, hey, that's bad news. It would surprise me a little bit that if a coyote was educated, so to speak, that he would still come in and work the hole. Um, you know, I would think that he would shy away altogether. Um, but, you know, maybe it's a few years out and his memory's not as good as it was and he, he knows there's some danger there, but he's figured out a way around it. Um, and so, there again, using your, your trap off to the side, blending, um, and, and I, I think it's not a bad idea, especially on your trap line, depending on how many sets you have out, how close they are and things like that, um, to, to vary your sets a little bit along the line, just so they're not seeing the same thing. Um, you know, maybe blend a couple of dirt holes and then leave some exposed and, um, or not exposed, but you know, leave some with the, the dirt pattern just to, just to give a little bit of variety. So, I don't think, honestly, that very much, many of us are that often gonna run across uh, educated coyotes, at least in the south, because there's not that many trappers around here, you know. Um, but there's no doubt that they can get educated. They're smart critters. Um, so that definitely could pose a challenge. All in all, um, I hope that gives um, everybody a little insight and some, a little something to think about that, you know, um, as trappers, we send, tend to think that our way is the right way all the time. And, you know, these dang coyotes need to get with the program. Well, that's our job is to fool them, not to convince them to step in, you know, to come back and step in the trap. It's to, to fool them the first time they come to the come to the set. So, uh, like I say, that's the fun of it to me. But um, there's that question. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to do better. Uh, try to at least maybe get one more episode out this week. And then, uh, you know, I feel like I'm caught up then and on track. And then, you know, have another episode ne the next Every week, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to keep keep pumping out an episode a week. And, and again, I appreciate everybody. I haven't checked lately. I need to need to check. But if you left a, a rating or review in iTunes, um, definitely appreciate that too. I know the, the the listenership is up, especially for the traffic season, and so I need to check that and see. Um, and I, I hope I hope you're getting some good value out of this. Um, and if you've got you know questions or ideas, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Chris at CoyoteTrappingSchool.com, K-R-I-S at CoyoteTrappingSchool.com, and uh, we'll talk about it. So I'm going to go and edit this and edit my daily trap line today. So if you're listening, I did have a weird thing happen on the trap line today. I, I've, I've got a, a beaver tra a couple of beaver traps. I set up a beaver job, and uh, there was... It's a big creek, and there's a small feeder creek, and for whatever reason, the beavers are crossing. They're not coming up the, the, where the, the feeder creek feeds into the big creek. It's not the easiest path to maneuver. There's some rocks and stuff, so they're, they're coming up the big creek a little bit farther than they're cutting across. Probably about 15 yards of, of uh, land and hitting into that small creek, and they've got a couple dams on that small creek. Well, anyway, it was a no-brainer blazing trail between that small creek and the, the big creek plain as day there's otters running it too um, so it's a really good slide and so i just put a conner bear on both sides and had my otter on the, the big creek side for or my beaver this the first thing this morning um, but i didn't get there until uh, probably three or so he was dead and hammered but uh, something in the meantime had gotten to him and eaten one of his hindquarters uh, and i don't know i mean it was it's a steep creek bank could have been coyotes, but I don't know. The thing that um, I wondered about really is otters. I wonder. I wonder if it was an otter or a couple of otters that came by and uh, saw a free meal and jumped on them. I'd, I'd have given anything to have a, uh, a trail camera on that. I think that would have been pretty cool to see. So, because um, like I said, the, the bank was pretty steep, and a coyote could have gone down there, but. I mean, it would have just been dumb luck that he passed by at the right time. Of course, I guess the same for Otter, so who knows. 
one other question that I have for your statement, whatever, is I am looking for some southern mink. So I've tried the last couple of years, we don't have mink in, in my area. Um, and I don't know how prevalent mink are across the south, to be honest with you, because you don't hear many people talking about mink. Nobody really targets mink. Um, you know, they don't have the value that they once did. But um, I've got an idea for kind of a fur bearers of the south pillow uh, or something to make out of my furs, my tan furs. But I have never caught a mink, so I don't have any mink hides or mink fur. So if you're a southern trapper um, or you're listening to this and you've got some mink, you're catching some mink or you're going to catch some mink, keep me in mind because I'm interested in buying some to, to have them tanned. To, or it, honestly, if you've got some tanned, I am all ears if you've had them professionally tanned. Um, please shoot me an email, chris at codytrappingschool.com. Either way, and I'd love to get up with you because I'd really like to get my hands on some southern mink. So if you can help me out with that, I would appreciate that. With that, I'm going to leave it with you, and we'll catch up with you next time.